We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust with Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith. Call 877-PLANNER now. In fact, lines are open right now. It's a good time to call uh, 877-PLANNER, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. Welcome to the Boomer's Brain Trust program. I'm Johnny Dean, starting the week off right here. Dinah Smith is with me, and again, uh, 877-PLANNER. If you need the website, you can go right to it, boomersbraintrust.com. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of emails to get to today. We're going to get to them likely in the second hour, so hang on for that. If you send us an email over the weekend, we will be taking care of that. Coming up this hour, Professor Plum back in studio. What do you know? So we'll have him at the anchor desk to talk about a few things, namely several reasons why you are still broke. We'll run down a few of them in just a little bit here. Brain Trust Panel of Advisors has some extra time today. Jordan Goodman's out on assignment, so we're going to bring the Brain Trust in for at least one more segment. And we'll tell you what's on their collective minds coming up. I know Rocky Binkowski is going to join Professor Plum, answering some of your questions over the next couple of segments. 51 After, Dinah Smith has some boomers and business headlines. That's all coming up and more. But first, Dinah, your first five stories right here. Can you believe it was 25 years ago today that the uh, tanker Exxon Valdez struck that reef in Alaska and caused the biggest U.S. oil spill in history? Then the biggest U.S. 25 oil spill. years? 1989. 25 years. 1989. 1989 was 25 years ago? Isn't that amazing? I know. It was the end of the 80s of 25 years ago? Yeah, All sorry. Right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this is the first time I've read this uh, this analogy. It was 11 million gallons of oil which spilled. Uh, it's what 17 Olympic-sized swimming pools could hold. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Uh, 1,300 miles shoreline affected. And, of course, all this happening as we had this Sort of a similar thing happened with that uh, extremely serious oil spill over the weekend, uh, which has closed down that shipping channel between Galveston Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, the collision was it two barges? Huge, yeah, two huge barges. And I don't how how do two huge barges not know they're coming that close? Does I don't it seem know. odd. Seems a little was odd. Was it a narrow channel and well, somebody it is just a, wasn't it's paying? A Maybe there were ships parked on either side. I mean, have you ever? I had this parking space. Had darn this? it. Yeah, that's just a thought. <laughs> Well, economists see the U.S. growth is picking up this year. I don't know about that. Consensus of 48 economists survey, surveyed by the National Association for Business uh, Economics is that bad weather cut first quarter growth to a weak annual rate of 1.9%, but the growth could exceed 3% by year's end. Uh, they're covering the survey period February, February 19th through March 5th. The uh, forecast for average U.S. economic growth of 2.8% this year is better than the 2.5% rate they predicted back in December. So what do they know? It keeps changing. <laughs> just tell us what it's going to be. Uh, or just say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Just I'm, I know shrug. I'm gonna, right, here's a number. We're probably <laughs> wrong. Okay, so can you imagine cleaning out your attic and coming across four live grenades? That's what happened to this Wisconsin woman, uh, Carolyn uh, Saganiak, I think is how you pronounce her last name. She was cleaning a box of her late husband's war souvenirs. That's when she found the grenades. The local chief of police came over. They eventually called the bomb squad in to <laughs> safely remove these things. And they said, you know, the weapons would have done extensive damage to the house and anybody in it. Really? Four live grenades. Thanks, hubby. Wow. <laughs> that that reminds me. Have you? Check my. You know what? I may have left. I did. I left. I left my grenades in my old. Is my brown corduroy jacket. Okay. I haven't worn it since 1979. Ooh. <laughs> well, if Honey, that's the only thing that's lost. Be careful. That's all right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the fur will fly. Well, Netflix CEO uh, Reed Hastings recently sounded off about the country's biggest uh, internet service providers demanding fees to ensure quick delivery of content from them and other data-intensive services. They're not very happy with him either. Uh, of course, I, the, the, the service providers keep pointing out that Netflix generates a massive amount of data consumption, mm -hmm. especially at peak hours, which, of course, sticks the bill, they say, to the ISPs. Now, you might remember Netflix announced an agreement with Comcast last month where it's going to start paying for a connection to Comcast. It's in talks with Verizon. Now, Hastings says his company was engaging in these talks reluctantly. Mm -hmm. He accused the ISPs of abusing their market power and shortchanging customers. No, nah, that never happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Netflix ever bothered to shortchange their customers either, did they? Nah. Never. Everyone's right. talking to everyone nowadays. That's right. Professor Plum's coming up next, answering your money questions. If you have any questions, 877-PLANNER. You can call right now. We are back in one minute. 